bitch on some groovy shit. <laughs> Sit right on away from here. Where you from, Mr. Dre? Northern neck, Virginia. <laughs> Warsaw, man. This country. Born and raised. Yeah, you wanna go to Los Angeles? Oh yeah. You think when you get out there you're gonna be all, you're gonna be ready for everything? Like I'm ready for whatever punches might throw at me, What's your plan for going to LA, Mr. Dre? Oh man, I already put my foot in everything, man, for real. Like get some money, come bring it back home, make sure everybody eats. To like give him back. Well, you got you gotta give back. For real, for real. The more you give back, more the more blessings come back to you. So you can't forget like the people that help you, like support you, like. Yeah, man. Uh, we always been interested in like the same shit. You ever thought about Bob Burns? Nah. I know you two know each other. I met Chris in like 2012. Yeah, when I when I moved to West Side. How old were y'all when you were like 16? Yeah, I was 16. Shit, where y'all meet? Your first like impression on uh, you know. so, Alright, all right, so when I first got over there, though, I didn't really know Chris. Chris was fan JV. So we, we on the bus, and uh, one, one of the guys say something about KD. <laughs> so I'm looking at him, Chris get heated. Boy, we fight, boy. Oh, so, KD yeah, so I'm like, oh, this motherfucker loves with KD. <laughs> 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 yeah. you, so I, 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 you ready to fight somebody <laughs> for KD, bro? So I was like, I fuck with Kobe, like, I don't understand nothing about KD. Bro, on the bus, he talking about man, Paul George better than KD. I said, bro, he's crazy. It depends on what time period. Man, it was never a time. I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. The only thing you got to, to, to say and not shut up is LeBron. I, I shut up, but I don't want to shut up because I know it. So you think the only player that you nah, like, that, that, get into that, bro. No, nah, I'm just saying, you're just saying the only player that you would accept, be acceptable to is like LeBron. Somebody said LeBron's going to KD, you'd be like, oh, I can't. Nah, Let's agree to disagree on that. Yeah, I agree to disagree. When you go to LA, what do you usually do like for us on a daily basis? Man, honestly, we be on everything. You know, we wake up in the morning, we see what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. We don't never get nothing planned. We just move out and move. Yeah. And always fall into something. Oh, so it's like you just kind of go with the flow, right? like when you go out there. Yeah, LA don't sleep, so it's always something to do out there. When was the first time you ever went there? First time I went three years ago. Three years ago? Yeah, yeah, about three. How years old ago. were you? I was about nineteen. So yeah, we, we pulled up there. I, I want to say our first, our first day out there, <laughs> we went to uh, we went to Hollywood. So he's walking around. And then my cousin I hit me. He's like, yo, pull up on me. So we pull up on him, and then uh, we soon realized, you know, we got a pool party at Amber Rose Crib. We was in the Amber function. Rose Crib. Yeah, first day in LA. <laughs> that Amber Rose Crib pool party. Yeah, yeah we was in the function for day in LA. Every since then, it's been up though, you know. Yes, sir. Set the ball high. Chris, when was the first time you ever went to LA? Yeah. Three years ago? Yeah, bro. I was like, man, damn, we playing Grand Theft Auto, bro. You're gonna see exactly what we're talking about. But the first we I don't know if I'm ever gonna go. Man. Yeah, you come to me. <laughs> you got it. Being into the deep box of dark and see what you say. You look good. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think you would still have had those same opportunities? 
from barbering, if you have never picked up a pair of clippers, think about that. Think about just from picking up a simple pair of clippers, how much opportunities and doors and windows and places it's taking you. Like when you pick up the clippers, bro, you it's no talent. No talent where you gonna go though, like for real. Like you never know who know who. And when you cutting, bro. If I never picked up a pair of clippers, I don't I doubt I would have the connections that I have today. I mean, yeah, I would probably have some of them, but it just I wouldn't be meeting as many people. I'd be going to the same, you know, everyday nine to five, seeing the same people unless somebody else get hired. But here, yeah, man, I mean, I'm gaining people that will know, Bert know, they've been coming through this shop for years, those people know people. It's just a never-ending cycle, you never know who you're going to cut and how that person can help you. So you think barbering opened up a bunch of different connections and opportunities for you? For sure. I think it opened up a lot of doors for many different opportunities. I hear people in here talking about their own clothing line, and that's something that I always wanted to do. Ever since you've been in the barbershop, you're not only cutting hair, but you're meeting entrepreneurs, you're meeting investors, you're meeting business owners, and while they're getting the haircut, you're talking, conversating, so you're picking up and learning that. So, barbering, since you picked up the Clippers, barbering has not only opened like, different doors for just haircuts, but you saying it, it brought you to the point where you wanted to open different doors like businesses and whatnot. Yeah, with all my passion, like, one of Vic's most popular sayings, something that I've been going by since I seen that was passion over profit, man. Barber opened up a lot of doors for me with the shoe game, with the barber game, with clothes, man. I remember being 16, 17, sitting in the tray bedroom, and we talking about clothing lines, like I'm drawing stuff. I remember being in Pennsylvania with my man Donnie, we started a clothing line, like, it was a bunch of different trials and tribulations. Like, I met a bunch of different entrepreneurs, a bunch of different people who kind of had the same mindset as me, and that's why we clicked. Like, right. we clicked right then and there. It, it's bigger than just being content with what I got right now. Do you think if you never picked up some clippers, you'd be the same person you are today? Yeah, I think I'd be the same. But it, at the same time, this taught me a lot of different skills. Just talking with a lot of different people that really grew my mindset really put my mind in a different place and helped me realize that it's it's a lot more avenues, you know, outside of Barber. You know, I want to, I want my own clothing line. I got a real deep passion for shoes. I love shoes ever since I was a kid. Because like I said earlier, like, I didn't have that stuff. I didn't have the, the Jordans and the Fly Jordans when I was in elementary school, like early middle school. I ain't getting into that. But now, like, I love them, you know, now that I, I'm, I'm it's on my own pocket, Dad ain't. <laughs> he get on me for spending so much money, but I just got this passion for shoes, man. I want to have my own barbershop one day and just all of my passion. I want y'all to be able to see that coming in and see everything that I love. You know, maybe buy some shoes. You never know. So stay tuned. It's a lot more to come. I want y'all to see the story and how I build this, this vision of mine and how I'm going to stay on track. I just want to document the journey from early on. That way I have this footage. One day because I'm gonna make it. One day to say that, you know, I that's that's where that's where it started.